We all agree that surface carbon is really important to life, energy, and climate. And we talk a lot every day about how there's too much carbon in the atmosphere now to be good. One of the Deep Carbon Observatory's big achievements over the past decade, as we've been hearing, has been to constrain the amount of carbon in deep reservoirs and the fluxes between these reservoirs and the surface. The surprising thing may be that although the mass of carbon in the atmosphere is way too big for our climate, much bigger than we want, it is actually much smaller than the amount of carbon that we have in Earth's biggest layer, the mantle. So much smaller that it's like this mouse relative to this elephant. The amount of carbon being so big in the mantle means that small changes in the behavior of carbon in the mantle can have a big impact on us here up here at the surface. What seems to this elephant like a tiny burp of carbon and volcanism to the atmosphere could overwhelm our little mouse. And so we need to know what's going to uh, affect us here on the surface. Now, of course, the amount of carbon that we have in the mantle, even if it's as big as this elephant, is very small compared to the amount of the mantle's silicates and oxides. Compared to the elephant, the total mass of the mantle would be the Statue of Liberty here. The mantle is going to control the amount of carbon that goes down and the amount that can come back up, for example, as CO2 gas and volcanism, or diamonds and kimberlite rocks. So here are our cast of characters. We're going to focus here on these two guys, CaCO3 and MgCO3, which are the main minerals that can grab carbon at the surface and carry it down. Theirs are both carbonates, which means they have oxidized carbon from our oxidized surface. So I'm here to tell you about the journey that they take to the deep earth and two major reactions that could happen to them as they go down. When they reach the mantle, uh, the mantle is different from the surface in several important ways. It's very hot, it's at very high pressure, and it's hungry for the oxygen carried by these carbonates. A major reason why these experiments are super difficult is that we need to make a million atmospheres of pressure and thousands of degrees temperature in the lab and apply them to minerals. We do this in the diamond anvil cell, which is a device we can use to squeeze little specks of minerals and rocks, and we heat them using a laser. The result is a synthetic rock, uh, which is so tiny that the individual grains can be nano-sized. Because they're so small, to figure out what changes have happened to these minerals, we need to use high-tech tools such as electron microscopes. In my lab, we've been using these methods to try to understand reactions between carbonates and things they might encounter in the mantle. Um, as our carbonates go down, they're going to encounter the silicates, MgSiO3 and CaSiO3. When they first reach the lower mantle, um, we get an exchange reaction. Check out how they swap their parts. We, at the upper part of the lower mantle, get always calcium silicate and magnesium carbonate. But as we go down, this reaction switches direction. So if our carbonates reach the base of the mantle, we instead are producing calcium carbonate and magnesium silicate. That's what these uh, images on the right are showing, an experiment demonstrating that we found these uh, phases at the base of the mantle conditions. This change in the reaction is happening because of the high pressures and high temperatures of the mantle. Now remember, the other thing about the mantle is that it's super hungry for oxygen. So the mantle is going to be stealing the oxygen from our carbonates. What it's going to want to do is to transform them into an entirely different carbon mineral, diamond. It's important which of the carbonates we're talking about. The experiment showed that calcium carbonate is more likely to survive this reaction than magnesium carbonate. So we have here an experiment where we've created calcium carbonate in contact with diamond together at conditions near the core mantle boundary. So what does this mean? As our carbonates go down, and their, their oxygen gets stolen and they turn into diamond, 
These diamonds, as they grow, could trap bits of the carbonates that are around, as well as the bits of the mantle, the surrounding minerals. The diamonds that form in the relatively shallow parts of the lower mantle will be more likely to trap magnesium carbonate. If they've reached the deeper part of the mantle, these two reactions that you've just seen are going to favor the calcium carbonate. These diamonds that form with their inclusions can get carried up to our surface over the hundreds, millions of years time scales of mantle convection. And what they carry in them is our only way of directly seeing what's down there in the mantle and what's happening to decarbon. We're going to be hearing more about these in our next talk. Thank you. <laughs>